Hey guys, it's Mrs. Wallace. I just wanted to give you a little bit of some information for uh, the quiz tomorrow. These are based on some questions that I've been getting uh, throughout the day, um, especially about uh, the factor market. Um, so looking at um, perfect competition, looking at monopsony. Remember, those are two types of uh, markets that we have when it comes to the factor market. Uh, what we're looking on the screen here is perfect competition. How do I know that? Because there's no uh, marginal factor cost that's great than supply. Um, I also know that this would be perfect competition. This is the market, this is the firm, and I would have the firm as a wage taker, you know, kind of look at this and this is equal, um, and then your MRP would be downward sloping, okay? What I'm really interested in kind of showcasing is a little bit about this wage here that we call the market equilibrium wage, and then this um, equilibrium quantity. All right, we always have an equilibrium when the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded. Remember, quantity supplied always has to do with the number of workers, the number of people who are potentially going to work. So the higher the wage, the more we have greater quantity. So the supply curve that's upward sloping is really the relationship between the number of workers who have an incentive to work. And then we see that increasing as the wage is higher and higher and higher. Okay. Um, so note, you know, if we have increases in the wage, say from $10 to some higher wage, you know, we could actually see movements along the supply curve. Okay. Um, based on uh, the higher wage, whenever wage change is we're not seeing a shift in the supply curve or an actual change in supply. We're just seeing a movement along the curve, okay? And the same thing exists in the case of demand, okay? At a, uh, for the firm, the firm is in a situation where uh, there's clearly, um, at a lower wage, the firm is more uh, uh, likely to um, have a greater uh, quantity of workers uh, than they would if at a really high wage, okay? So at a very high wage, we might have a situation where the supply um, of workers is uh, much the, the quantity supplied of workers is much greater than the quantity demanded, okay? So you can also have movements along the curve for the demand, right? Changes in wage will um, bring about uh, movements along the curve. Uh, at the same time, there are certain things that are going to shift the supply and demand, so let's look at that, okay? And I think we've gone over this in class a lot, but on the demand side, there's a few things that can affect the demand curve for the market. One is the price of the product. One is marginal product, okay? So that's kind of the ingredient ingredients for MRP. Um, another thing that can shift market demand is the prices of um, or the demand for other resources, complements or substitute resources. Okay. Uh, so if you're purchasing um, a certain type of um, coffee bean and you make, you know, special drinks out of those coffee beans, if something happens to the demand for those coffee beans, right, maybe the price increases a lot and demand for those coffee beans goes down, then maybe demand for other resources that are also related to that um, drink production, you know, cappuccino or whatever it is, is also going to decrease, okay? So those are the only things, if it's not on that list, it's not the price of the product, it's not marginal product, or it's not something related to prices of other uh, resources, then it is not something that can shift demand, okay? Um, with supply, anything that can shift the supply curve really has to be connected to the um, uh, entire mass of people that's either increasing or decreasing as a result of um, some sort of uh, force, right? Uh, greater numbers of people um, who are in the society, um, greater numbers of people who are heading into a um, college program and then into a particular career, um, maybe, uh, you know, more affordable uh, college, you know, stuff, something like that could lend itself to increases um, in supply of particular um, occupations or jobs, okay? And this, um, we're using the labor market again you could always look at capital you could always look at land um, as well okay um, so in this example right we have the state passes legislation requiring new teachers I think we looked at this one in class right this is something that is going to reduce the quantity of people who ultimately put their hat in the ring to become teachers and as a result we're going to see a decrease in supply what happens as a result of that once you have a new supply curve is a couple of things in the market right Right? The market um, equilibrium is now going to be different. We're going to have a lower quantity of teachers than we were before. And
then we are going to have a higher wage. Okay, in fact, that's probably the reason why a union might call on um, a, a, you know the state to have legislation that is you know increasing competency tests. So that way, there's a smaller number of teachers, and that could maybe increase uh, wages. Um, also, we have an effect on the firm once there's a situation where the wage has gone from you know this lower wage to that higher wage the firm is going to take the wage and you're going to see at the firm level um, where the firm before you know was hiring this quantity of teachers let's call it q1 now it's going to be hiring this quantity of teachers at q2 okay so kind of note you know sample uh, supply curve change Okay, guys, so let's look at this one. The government relaxes a tough immigration law, and it's, you know, easier for construction workers, you know, from other countries to come to the U.S., okay? This is something that could definitely be a supply uh, situation. And so if we look at it first in kind of perfect competition, right, we're looking at that particular model. If it's uh, easier for uh, workers to come, we're going to expect that there's going to be a supply curve uh, shift to the right. You'll have greater supply in the um, market. You might have an increase in the quantity of workers you know who are now participating in the construction industry um, and you might also have as a result of that increase in quantity you might have a lower wage okay um, the uh, way that we might look at this in a, a more monopsonistic market okay monopsonistic market we have our demand we have our supply and we also have our marginal factor cost okay i'm not labeling all of this but our quantity would be where our mrp equals mrc again we would use the supply curve for the wage okay so sorry that's uh the wage okay um what we would see if we had a supply shift okay like the one that happened above if this happened to be a monopsony the entire construction uh, workers uh, was in a monopsony you would see a shift in the supply similar to we have this but note your um, m uh, RC would move with that supply curve, okay? Um, so that might look a little uh, haphazard the way that I've graphed it, but they uh, move together, okay? And that's kind of important. Let's spend just a moment on the concept of the minimum wage. And there's two ways we wanna look at this. One is if we look at the minimum wage in um, a perfectly competitive market, okay? So here we don't have that marginal factor cost, you know, that's greater than supply. This is just a supply curve and we have a demand curve, okay? And let's say that this is workers, maybe this is, you know, auto workers, okay? And this is the demand for uh, auto workers and the supply of people who are willing to work uh, as an auto worker. What we see with the minimum wage, okay? So the equilibrium wage without that red price floor would just be W1, okay? That's the equilibrium wage and the firm would be hiring quantity Q1, okay? So not the firm, the market would be hiring the quantity of workers where quantity Q1 is. Uh, when the government comes in and imposes that minimum wage, that red line where it says like new minimum wage, there's a couple things uh, that happen. Okay, first of all, something that we note is that the new minimum wage, this um, like wage that was previous, the equilibrium wage, that wage is like completely gone. It's invisible. Now we have a binding uh, price floor. It's a price floor because the price floor is always above the equilibrium price, okay? Um, the issue with the minimum wage in a typical perfectly competitive labor market is that quantity uh, supplied is greater than quantity demanded, okay? And it intuitively makes sense at a really high wage. Lots and lots and lots of people want to work as auto mechanics. Maybe some people are even going to leave their other job to go work as an auto mechanic. So all of those individuals are uh, running into the work force at a really high wage and of course the higher the wage you know if the minimum wage was way up here you would have even more uh, people interested in supplying their labor to work in a uh, machine shop or an, an auto uh, mechanic shop you know I would be throwing in my labor right to work in an auto uh, mechanic shop 
Uh, on the demand side, however, the higher the minimum wage goes, and if it's at that red line or if it's higher, um, we see that there is not high uh, quantity uh, demanded um, using this demand curve, right? Uh, at very, very, very high uh, wages, we don't have a lot of quantity. Um, you know, Q2, if the line is red, only Q2 would be um, the, the quantity demanded, right? Firms don't want to hire workers when they're really, really, really expensive, okay? So um, if we look at just the red uh, for an example, okay, and we kind of say, all right, we know the quantity supplied is Q3, the quantity demanded is going to be Q2, and our quantity supplied is greater than our quantity demanded, uh, we have a surplus of workers, okay? So like when we looked at price floors earlier in the year, this creates a surplus. Surplus. But in this case, not a surplus of yo-yos, a surplus of auto workers. And we actually call that unemployment. And the difference between the quantity Q3 and quantity Q2 is the actual number of people who are unemployed. Okay. Now, up until the quantity of Q2, there are people who are actually going to earn, you know, this uh, wage of whatever that minimum wage is, say $15 an hour. So some quantity of people will be better off, okay? And it's possible this is a good number of people and our goal might be to ensure that a good sized quantity of people can ultimately access a higher wage, okay? They're better off than they were before. But there is perhaps an argument that with um, a perfectly competitive labor market, we could actually be creating um, unemployment the higher the wage goes, okay? Uh, this looks a little different when we get to monopsony, okay? So let's take a look at that. 